Welcome to the OnlyFans Secrets Marketing Podcast. The goal of this podcast is to help both new and established OnlyFans creators learn the basics of online branding, marketing, and promotion to help you make more money with your content and maximize your time online. My name is Richard Lewis, and I have over 20 years of internet marketing experience. So let's get started with today's topic. And that topic is, is OnlyFans swipe left Tinder? So in researching the psychology of OnlyFans subscribers, I began to realize that OnlyFans is possibly a reaction to the app Tinder. In many ways, OnlyFans is for all the people that never get a swipe right, but badly want one. And OnlyFans creators are the people they wish would swipe right on them. In this episode, we'll explore why this is and how you can utilize this information to gain more followers and subscribers on your OnlyFans. Okay, so first question is, what is Tinder? So for those living under a rock uh, for the last 10 years, Tinder is a popular app for dating. Uh, They took the concept from a site called Hot or Not. It existed in the early 2000s. This was basically a site where people would put up their pictures and then people would vote, you know, is this person hot or not? And, you know, that kind of was a fad. But they took that, kind of made it more mature and added, you know, more dating aspects to it and created the popular app Tinder. So what happens there is if you are attracted to someone, uh, then you swipe right on them. The problem with the site is that, you know, say the top five to 10% of attractive people get like 90%, you know, or the majority of the swipes. So it's interesting that, you know, when talking to uh, attractive women, uh, I found they have very little clue about the uh, straight male experience on that app. Um, so basically attractive women get inundated with messages on Tinder. Uh, so this in turn led to the creation of a site called Bumble, uh, founded by a woman, uh, where women then make the rules. So as I mentioned, when you speak to people who, you know, are attractive, they don't realize that on Tinder, uh, because they're getting so many messages that what, you know, the majority of men are getting and the majority of people who are using Tinder, as as I mentioned, you know, are straight. uh, So straight men, straight women. Um, And what happens is, is that straight men uh, are getting, you know, one or two messages, uh, you know, if they reach out to a whole bunch of people. And uh, while, you know, a straight woman would just sit back and wait for those messages to come in. So that's why, as I mentioned, you know, Bumble was created. But what happens is, is that now all the power uh, in this particular dynamic is established to belong at this point to the women. And Tinder, that already was quite difficult for men uh, to get attention of women, then now you have Bumble and sites that are even more, you know, behind a wall for men to be able to actually get interaction with attractive women. So, the question I'm posing here is what if OnlyFans is just Bumble, but for men? So basically, it's where men make the rules. So similar with a Tinder. So although Tinder is not directly out there with its rules having to do with that, like if you've ever been on uh, Bumble, you realize that it's up to the woman to reach out. You Basically, as you know, a straight male, you know, you can uh, choose, you know, to like the person. And then within a 24 hour period of time, that person can get back to you and you can message each other back and forth. Again, even more towards the power dynamic towards uh, the woman. So, you know, if you were to survey men and say, okay, what, how could we create 
a male version of Bumble or a male version of Tinder. This would be where uh, men would list intimacy as the most important thing. Um, you know, if men were to create a dating site where they had the majority of the power, they would have created OnlyFans. I mean, this is a place where, you know, they can pay to have the most attractive women in the world speak to them, you know, whereas before they would not. I mean, they would be pretty lucky if someone... Uh, not as attractive, even spoke to them on something like Tinder or Bumble. But now they have the the opportunity to speak to some of the most attractive women in the world. And, you know, even better under this scenario that men are creating, as I'm speaking for men, I'm saying, I'm stating about straight men. Obviously, they are uh, gay male apps and gay female apps, but I'm primarily talking about the majority of people who are on uh, OnlyFans and our subscribers are straight white men, are, are straight men. So uh, what we want is, you know, they would say even better would be to automatically get to see uh, the women naked uh, with payment. So men are already, uh, you know, paying uh, in some ways for Bumble. They're paying for Tinder. I guarantee the majority of the money that something like Tinder or Bumble makes, it comes from men, um, you know, with the opportunity of possibly going out on a date with an attractive woman. So now they're paying the same amount in some cases, but they're actually getting to interact with not just anyone, but you know, the most attractive people to them that they find. This would just not have happened on something like Tinder 10 years ago or even Bumble today. And even better, they guarantee the creators, the women, guarantee that they will speak to them through uh, direct messages or respond to comments. So basically, it is a dream world for men who were not succeeding on Tinder and Bumble and were getting swipe, you know, lefted, basically. So why is this? So what happens here is, is that OnlyFans removes rejection, you know, that uh, was always there, was always a possibility. So, you know, that no longer exists they're not going to be rejected. Your possible subscribers are not going to be rejected if they want to subscribe to you, if they want to talk to you, if they want to interact with you. So as mentioned, when men put themselves on Tinder, uh, they need to be the ideal uh, man. They need to be dressed correctly, they need to have status, they need to put, you know, all these interesting hobbies they have that could possibly attract women, uh, they have to be appealing, but that is removed for OnlyFans. So, if anything, their hobbies, they can actually talk about the nerdy, geeky, unpopular things that they enjoy and try to find an OnlyFans creator who also enjoys those as well. So they don't have to conform and turn themselves into something different than they are. And as mentioned, they get very attractive women to speak with them. So again, OnlyFans, kind of ideal for certain segment of the population, the swipe left men of the inter in internet or just the world. So, you know, it's funny because there are actually training videos on YouTube about how to become more attractive on your Tinder profile. There are people who pay for services for this. So it's someone's career to make sure that a guy's profile will look appealing to women so that they will then swipe right. This is how far it goes. So under that scenario, 
you have a certain group of men who are going to be willing to make that kind of effort. They are going to be willing to conform to whatever standard that might need, you know, to be made to get noticed by the women on these dating sites. But then there is a large group of men who are not interested in that. They are going to just try to find the easiest solution for whatever problem they have. And in this way, it's only fans. So the men are just saying, okay, well, I'm tired of the rejection. I'm tired of people not, you know, swiping right. And I've, or they come to an acceptance that they're just not a swipe right sort of person, or they just don't want to change themselves into becoming a swipe right sort of person. So at that point, you know, the roles, you know, on OnlyFans are now reversed. So men will see OnlyFans that way, where they have the power, the power dynamic switching back over to to them for money. So, you know, if you look at that, like what, there's a big thing, you know, I've mentioned in the podcast before, people, and this comes from uh, a speaker called named Tony Robbins. But Tony Robbins talks about how people will do anything to avoid pain and gain pleasure. He really hits on those in most of his uh, talks. And you can imagine here, if you think about this, you have a lot of pain that was caused by and is caused by the way that dating goes right now in 2021. And the no one is going to, you know, uh, go out and talk among their male friends about the pain. Oh, I got rejected on Tinder or I got rejected on this particular uh, dating app. If anything, that's going to make them seem even weaker and more pathetic. So there's really no outlet here for these a group of people. It's, it's almost like Fight Club. If you ever seen Fight Club, <laughs> it's a great movie. But anyway, um, it's like there's no release here for this rejection. And that is pain for people. And OnlyFans came around at this exact right time. And said, okay, you can, to quote unquote, date or virtually subscribe or however you want to look at it to the most beautiful women in the world. They're not going to have any negative opinions of you. They're not going to say mean things to you. And they are going to do what you ask them to do as long as you continue to pay money. So in this way, OnlyFans ends up being a reverse Tinder or a reverse bubble. So I hear a lot from OnlyFans creators uh, who get men, quote unquote, falling in love with them from their OnlyFans, trying to meet them. And this is likely because they are the swipe left rejects from Tinder. Not to be mean about it, but, you know, things got even worse for men with Bumble. And the power dynamic kept shifting. So now this is the only place where men now feel in charge. So you're going to end up with people who, you know, are going to have these like false fantasies and they're going to have this false reality because it's, it's a blurring, you know, in this gray area that's happening. So, you know, that all the power has always, at least on dating sites, once, you know, things like Tinder started to exist. And we can imagine that that will go on into infinity. But the power has shifted to women's hands for who they find to be most suitable to date. And that is not the majority of men. And men have it in their ideals because men are visual as we've gone over before in the podcast that they like a very attractive woman usually a woman that's much more attractive than they are and that might sound mean but it's the truth you know that's what 